Hi everyone, welcome to our channel Medveda, where you get a new learning experience with me. Today our topic is microcytic anemia. Before going into it, we have to know what is anemia, its signs, symptoms and causes, which is provided in our previous video. The link is given in the description below. Please watch it. Now we will go into our topic, microcytic anemia. Microcytic anemia, by the name itself, it indicates that it occurs due to decrease in RPC size as the MCV less than 80 femtoliters. Normal RBC size ranges from 80 to 100 femtoliters. As it is less than 80 femtoliters, it is called microcytic anemia. Now we will know the causes of microcytic anemia. It is denoted by the mnemonic Sita, by which we can remember easily. Each of it indicates each of the causes, and these are the causes of microcytic anemia. S stands for sideroblastic anemia, I stands for iron deficiency anemia, T stands for thalassemia, and A stands for anemia of chronic diseases. Now we will discuss each of these causes in detail. First, what we will discuss iron deficiency anemia. By the name iron deficiency anemia, we know that it is caused due to insufficient iron and it is the most common cause of microcytic anemia. First, we have to know the recommended dietary allowances for iron. This recommended dietary allowance for iron differs from male to female. Male have 8 milligrams, whereas female require 18 milligrams. And next, we will discuss causes of iron deficiency anemia. Most common cause is nutritional deficiency. Next, peptic ulcer. How this peptic ulcer causes these iron deficiency anemias? We know iron has two states, Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus. This Fe2 plus is available in meat which can be easily absorbed. Then this Fe3 plus provided through plant sources and for this absorption it has to be converted into Fe2 plus. Where this occurs we will see now. In our stomach when we take this Fe3 plus form of iron it is converted in the presence of the acid to Fe2+, which is observed in our duodenum and proximal jejunum. In infants, also we observe this iron deficiency anemia who are totally dependent on breastfeeding. And we will also see it in pregnancy women too. And in menorrhagia conditions, we also we see it as there is excessive blood loss. In colon cancer, like polyps, if quartans are present, like ankylostoma duodenal, which is present in our duodenum, prevents absorption of iron. Peptic ulcer sorry proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole pantaprazole which prevents the acid production and decreases acidity in our stomach also prevents the absorption of iron okay now signs and symptoms like fatigue weakness pallor Dizziness, plica means craving for clay, sand, such type of things. Next, atropic tongue. Next, coilonychia. It is also very important identification for this iron deficiency anemia. Here, the nails are spoon shaped.
here at the pictures that through which we know how the atropic tongue looks like and this coil on Ikea nails how they appears as it is one of these atropic tongue and coil on Ikea are important characteristics for the identification of iron deficiency anyway. and next we will go into labs RPC is microcytic hemoglobin decreases serum iron decreases as the intake of absorption of iron decreases serum ferritin decreases this serum ferritin decreases because there is malabsorption of iron so there are no stored iron as it decreases and serum transferrin level increases to carry the maximum available iron total binding capacity increases to provide the maximum iron to compensate it so it, they are increased and serum transferrin saturation decreases as there is no available oxys sorry iron and red blood cell distribution width also increases here are the two histological slides which shows them this is the normal RPC where they are equally distributed and equal in size this is the microcyte this is the microcytic anemia slide which is iron deficiency anemia here we can see that various distribution in sizes of the RPC and next we will see the peripheral blood smear this is the slide which shows it here we can see the microcytic hypochromic condition and we will see a central pallor see here you can see that the hemoglobin is distributed in the periphery and there is a large central pallor Poiclo sites means different shapes of RBC are seen like pencil shape here you can see it treatment for this ferrous sulfate ferrous fumarate and ferrous gluconate are used as treatment sources next thalassemia before going into thalassemia first we have to know about globin chains about of hemoglobin there are four types of globin chains and these are alpha beta gamma delta adult hemoglobin is made up of four chains and the adult hemoglobin hba is made up of two alpha and two beta chains HbA2 which is also a adult hemoglobin it is made up of two alpha and two delta chains HbF which is fetal hemoglobin it is made up of two alpha and two gamma chains we have to remember all these three to know the lab findings of thalassemia now we will discuss about thalassemia. It is abnormal globin production. It is inherited disorder, and it is again further divided into alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia. This alpha thalassemia occurs due to mutation in alpha globin, and this beta thalassemia occurs due to mutation in beta globin. In alpha thalassemia, we will discuss what are its genes and what are the symptoms caused due to alpha thalassemia and its lab result in beta thalassemia we will discuss about what are the genes affected and what are its lab results next alpha thalassemia it is caused due to abnormal globin product alpha globin production or alpha globin deficient 
it is quantitative not only alpha thalassemia but all the thalassemias are quantitative both alpha beta both the thalassemias are quantitative in alpha thalassemia four genes are involved these are present on chromosome number 16 now we will see how these four genes are deficient what are if what happens if these genes are deficient and what symptoms are caused if one gene is deleted it is asymptomatic and they should doesn't show any symptoms if two genes are mutated it causes minor alpha thalassemia they shows mild anemia in this patient we observes mild anemia next if three genes are mutated major thalassemia we will see hbh which is a tetramer of beta globulin as there is no production of alpha this beta forms tetramers because the three genes are deleted no alpha globulin production and this tetramer of beta destroys the rbc and this tetramer of beta is called hbh four genes are deleted what happens if the four genes got deleted means it causes fetal demise in which the fetus doesn't survives as the fetal hemoglobin is made up of a two alpha and two gamma we will see a hb brats as no alpha gamma forms a tetramer and this tet because of this tetramer formation it destroys the rbc and it can't provides any oxygen to the fetus next beta thalassemia it is due to mutation in the beta globulin chain two genes are involved which are present on chromosome 11 if there in this if there is any deficiency in one gene it causes minor thalassemia in this beta globulin is produced but it is not produced in the in such a way which it's produced it is somewhat deficient and if two if the both the genes are deficient it decreases in amount of hbf uncommon type if one of the gene is mutated completely and the other is deficient only some chains are formed if both the genes are completely mutated there is no production of beta chains complete absence of beta chains this is called major thalassemia now we will discuss about all these uh, two main mutations minor and major not all beta thalassemia minor heterozygous state is present asymptomatic and mild anemia is seen in this patient in this patients we will observe mild anemia it is one of the symptom to identify it and as they have somewhat deficient in the beta globulin chain and the lab findings are given below hba decreases hba2 and hbf are increased to compensate the beta deficient as there is somewhat deficiency in the beta globulin chain these two are increased so they can compensate it which the beta globulin is deficient beta thalassemia major it is also called coolis anemia it is homozygous we will see severe anemia in these patients and plate transfusion dependent
they completely depend on the blood transfusion because there is no production of the beta globin uh, for less than 6 months infant there is no problem they will have fetal hemoglobin when they become more than 6 months they, uh, fetal hemoglobin is converted to adult hemoglobin so there is no beta chain production so they forms alpha globin tetramers which destroys the RBC for it they need blood transfusion for the transport of these gases and everything and we will see hepatosplenomegaly in these patients it is one of the identification medullary hemopoiesis to compensate the beta globin other bones of the skull also produces the RBC and the skull bones also produces the RBC to compensate it, it. because of this it leads to the deformation of the skull bone and make it appears like line like faces here the picture shows that how the faces appears like a line and we can see how the skull is deformed it is one of the characteristic identification of this beta thalassemia major x-rays we will see a crew cut like appearance it also helps in the diagnosis of this beta thalassemia here is the picture shows you can see in the spine like projection these are the crew cut appearance and this crew cut appearance and line like faces both helps in identifying it in lab findings there is no HbA production and HbA2 increases along with HbF which is also increases as there is no HbA these two levels increases for the transport of the gases and everything and target cells can be seen see you can see like a bull eye like appearance see there is a target it appears like a bull's eye you can see here next sideroblastic anemia caused by defective protoporphyrin synthesis or heme synthesis in erythroid precursor cell this result in accumulation of iron as hemoglobin is made up of heme and globin this heme again is made up of iron and protoporphyrin if there is any defect to protoporphyrin this result in accumulation of iron this deposition of iron containing granules within mitochondria in ring shape around the nucleus this ring shaped sideroblast are found in bone marrow next we will know the pathogenesis of sideroblastic anemia in this due to disturbance of heme synthetic enzymes like ALA synthetase ALA dehydrogenase and ferrochelitase this leads to decrease in iron incorporation into him. This iron incorporation decrease result in accumulation of iron in the mitochondria that surrounds the nucleus. Because of these ring shaped sideroblasts are found in bone marrow and this results in increase of iron deposition in bone marrow and this causes increase in serum iron. Because of this decrease in iron incorporation into the heme, this results in extracellular cell division which causes microcytic hypochromic condition. Next, what causes this deficiency of these heme synthetic enzymes are vitamin B6 deficiency, alcoholism, lead poisoning and next we will know what are its lab finding. By looking into this picture, we can see that the iron forms ring shaped around the nucleus of RBC in bone marrow. Now, we will know how the lab findings are in sideroblastic anemia. First, we will see that there is increase in ferritin level. This occurs due to the increase in 
iron deposition and next we will see the transferrin level which is decrease as we have already sufficient iron in our body there is no require for transferrin to bring the iron and there we can see that serum iron increases sorry it increases not decreases as serum iron increases we can see there as the iron incorporation decreases because of this leads to increase in serum iron and because of this increase in serum iron the percentage saturation also increases as it has to collect all this iron and bring to the bone marrow and liver for its deposition okay next we will go to anemia of chronic diseases it is secondary to chronic infection it is caused due to chronic infection autosome autoimmune disorders cancer infections in this iron is unavailable for use even they are present as they are trapped within macrophages and erythropoiesis is suppressed by the cytokines in this hepcidin level is also increased which prevents the absorption of iron or decreases the iron absorption lab findings ferritin level ranges from normal to high as there is already stored ferritin so there is no decrease or any in, in, in it it ranges from normal to high and serum iron decreases as it is already blocked by the macrophages even if it is present it is stored in its reservoir state so there is no serum iron available and total iron binding capacity decreases as hepcidin prevents the iron absorption so tibc also decreases as tibc decreases percentage saturation also decreases thank you for watching this video for the further videos please stay tuned to our channel please like share subscribe